Hello, this is Percentages with Multipliers 2, with me, Mr McIver, of the London Central and North West Maths Hub, based at St Marylebone School in Central London. If you haven't seen the first video in this series, it may not be a problem. Just make sure you fully understand what I'm going to show you right now. The big idea in the first video of this series was that any percentage calculation can be thought of as a multiplication sum. For instance, if I want to work out what 80% of £28 is, I just reimagine this problem as 80 hundredths times £28, which turns into a decimal calculation, 0 0.8 times 28, and I get the answer £22.40. Very easy, couple of presses on your calculator. You can very easily extend this idea into working with percentage increase and decrease. So if I have something costing £50 and I want to increase the price by 20%, I write down 120% of £50 and now I rewrite that statement as a multiplication sum. 120 hundredths times £50, which is 1.2 times 50, which is £60. And to decrease by a percentage, I can do something very similar. I have to be a little bit careful because I remember that I always start off with 100%. If I'm reducing £140 by 25%, start off with 100%, end up with 75%, I need to figure out what 75% of £140 is, which is a very similar calculation to the previous ones. That's what we covered in the first video. If that's not a problem, we'll move straight on. And I want to look very closely at this central calculation here and imagine why we might want to do this back to front. Here is a very common calculation done by people working in retail establishments up and down the country every single day. The price of a watch, including 20% VAT, is £60. What was the price before VAT was added? What's this thing here, VAT? The answer is, it's a kind of tax. It's paid directly to the government by the person selling you this watch. You give them £60. They do not keep the entire £60. A certain amount of it goes straight back to the government in tax. VAT stands for Value Added Tax. And it's added onto virtually everything you buy, apart from food. But you don't generally know what the VAT is. The prices in the stores have always added it on already. So a very common calculation involves starting off with the actual price and figuring out what the tax is that you now have to pay the government. So if you're running a shop and you've got a bunch of prices sitting on items, one of the jobs you have to do is figure out how much of that is actually due in tax. Here's how you do it. And we're going to use these very numbers here. We know that £50 plus 20% is £60. So when I simply write this down as it stands, we know the answer to the question is it was £50. Now, it's very tempting to think all I need to do is reduce the £60 by 20%. And as we saw in the last session, to reduce £60 by 20%, we just work out 80% of £60, which is... £48. Pounds. But we know that is wrong. The person adding on the VAT added it on to the earlier price, which we know is £50. Pounds. So how do you get £50 pounds out of plus 20% and £60? Pounds? We started off with the price of a watch before VAT. We then work out what 20% of that amount is, and we add it on to the original amount. Now, we know that that whole thing is £60. That's the price of the watch sitting in the shop. This price here is 100% of the original price, but we don't know what that original price is. We know that 120% of the original price was £60, so we can write that. 120% of price before that was added equals £60. We can simplify it slightly by writing it like that. Let's close it all up a bit. And then we can rewrite it again as... 120 hundredths times P, the unknown price, equals £60. Now I just rearrange that little bit of algebra to get 1.2 times P equals £60, or 
P equals 60 pounds divided by 1.2, 50 pounds. Which we knew all along, so now we're going to do one where you don't know the price before VAT was added. The price of a chair including 20% VAT is £144. What was the price before VAT was added? We simply write down 120% of mystery price is... Let's translate this into a fraction. 120 hundreds times P, which is 1.2 times P, equals £144. Simply rearrange the equation and we get... P, the original price of the chair, was £120, with £24 tax. One more, this time a really expensive watch. A Rolex, including 20% VAT, is £1,500. What was the price of that before VAT was added? As ever, 120% of the original price, which is of course 120 hundreds of the original price, blah blah blah, equals £1,500. Rearrange the equation and we find that the watch was £1,200, and this time it looks like they've added on £300 in VAT. But it's not just VAT calculations that involve a percentage being added on to an original amount. Quite a lot of the time, if you buy a ticket for a big event, like a concert, you'll find that the agency through whom the tickets are sold charges some kind of commission. In this case, I paid £63.25 for a ticket including a 15% booking fee. So how much am I paying for the actual ticket? I want to make sure I'm not being ripped off and that I am only being charged the 15%. What is the actual price of this ticket before the booking fee was added? Just like the last time, I have to think what percentage of the original price am I paying? And in this case, it's 115% of mystery price that I don't know. I rewrite this as 115 hundredths times P, or 1.15 times P equals 63 pounds and 25 pence. Rearrange my equation, I should be getting a 55 pound ticket for my money. What about percentage decrease? The sale price of a TV is 224 pounds, and you are told that the prices have been reduced by 20%. So how much should that TV have been on sale for before it was reduced. Well, in this case, you have to think the original price has had 20% taken away from it and £224 actually represents 80% of that 100% that you don't know about. So, you write down a very, very similar calculation. 80% of P or 80 hundredths times P, 0.8 times P, equals £224. Rearrange, the TV should have been on sale for £280 before the price was reduced. These kind of calculations are often referred to as reverse percentage calculations. They're sometimes thought of as the most difficult ones. They're probably the most difficult ones you get at GCSE, although... In core maths, you're certainly expected to know some slightly more sophisticated things than this, but they are the trickiest ones we'll be looking at in this session. There are just a couple of others I want to look at before we finish today. Here's the first one. It's finding a change as a percentage. Here we've got a television reduced in price from 350 to 210 pounds, and we want to find out what is the percentage by which it has been reduced. Notice that in this problem, we don't have any figures for percentages. We just have a bunch of amounts of money and we need to figure out the percentage. In every other one we've looked at, we've always known the percentage and been trying to figure out an actual amount. Although it looks quite different, you set it up in exactly the same way. We start off by saying the TV cost £350 at the start. This was the pre-sale price. This is 100%. We've now knocked off a bit of money and ended up with a price of £210. So this is our mystery percentage, but we do know the price. Now, we can very easily work out the amount of money that goes in that box there simply by doing 350 take away 210 The reduction is £60. All we need to do 
is figure out what that £60 is as a percentage of the original amount. Well, we can write that using our multiplication technique as before, like this. X percent, because we don't know what the percentage is, of 350 equals £60. Or X hundredths times 350 equals £60, which we rearrange to X hundredths equals £60 over £350, or X equals 210 over 350 times 100 equals 40. The reduction is 40%. You may already know how to do this by thinking of it as an equivalent fraction. That is absolutely fine. But if the numbers are really awkward, you can always do it by rearranging algebraically, as I've just shown you here. And the very last one I want to show you is another one where we don't know the percentage, we have to find it. It often applies to test scores, but you can apply it to anything where you need to know one value as a percentage of another. Here we've got Amanda scoring 14 out of 25 on a test. So we know that 25 marks corresponds to 100% of the total score. Amanda's only got 14 of those 25 marks. So we'll call that X percent. And now we can write down our usual bit of algebra X percent of 25 is 14, so X hundredths times 25 equals 14, or X hundredths equals 14 over 25, and finally X equals 14 over 25 times 100, which is 68. So Amanda has scored 68 percent in her test, and that is how you work out one number as a percentage of another. So to recap, we have looked at three different types of percentage problems today. Most recently we looked at how to calculate one number as a percentage of another, often when you're looking at test scores, but it does apply to other things too. We looked at how to find a change as a percentage. And we looked at how to find the original amount after a change, when you know the final amount and you know the percentage it's changed by, you just don't know what you started with. Here's an example of each that you can leave on the screen as you work through the task that you've been set. First of all, one number as a percentage of another. Convert the score of 56 out of 80 into a percentage. Well, 80 is 100%. 56 is X percent, so X percent of 80 must be 56. Or X hundredths times 80 equals 56. Or I suppose X over 100 equals 56 over 80. We solve the equation and get x equals 56 over 80 times 100, which is 70. The score is 70%. Next, finding a change as a percentage. Price is reduced from 45 to 36 pounds. What was the reduction? Well, the reduction as an amount of money was 9 pounds. So I need to find out what 9 pounds is as a percentage of the start price. You always work it out as a percentage of the start value. So I guess that means X percent or X hundredths times 45 is 9. As ever I rearrange X over 100 equals 9 over 45. X equals 9 over 45 times 100 which is 20. The reduction is 20 percent. And now the trickiest one from GCSE. Finding the original amount after a change, a reverse percentage calculation. After a 15% increase, the price of an item is £46. Well, we know the original price was 100% of the value we're looking for. So, with an increase of 15%, we know that 115% of the price is £46. We translate that into... 115 hundredths times P for price equals 46. We rearrange and we find that P equals 40. The original price must have been 40 pounds. That's it for this session. Keep this screen in front of you as you work through the problems you've been set.